oh, Singapore is a fine country. But honestly, living here on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't feel this strictness. This is Max Chernov. He is a famous YouTuber. Originally from Russia, he's been living in Singapore for five years. Max explained what Russians and Singaporeans have in common, his love for Singlish, how drastically Singapore has changed him, and what he thinks about Russia-Ukraine war. Let's go. In terms of living and kind of adapting to life in Singapore, over your five years, yeah. have you seen much of a change in terms of pricing of things that you need to to pay for? I'm pretty localized. I don't need to live like fancy expat life. If I want to save, I go to hawker, spend like five dollars and have my lunch. If I want some something like more expensive, more Western, more fancy, I can go there. So for me, it's, it's not a problem. I can perfectly like save money here. The only thing that worries me is the rental prices. Mm -hmm. Though it feels like it's getting better now, so the prices are stabilizing. I just talked to my agent and she said, yeah, it's actually like a since a month ago, the prices start like going down. 2022 was terrible. Like I know many people actually left Singapore because of the landlords wanted like double the price in some of the cases. Sometimes people mistakenly compare Singapore not to other capitals, not to mm -hmm. other big cities, but to let's say to the small town in Vietnam where you can downshift and like spend so much less money. But the, the proper way is to compare Singapore with London, New York, or Moscow, or Beijing to big cities or Hong Kong. Let's say the quality of life that you still have in Singapore, including housing, it's way better than in other places, in big cities, mm -hmm. if you compare it to big cities. How much do you pay for rent? We pay 7,500 7, right now. That sounds like a huge amount of money, but you're right, when you compare it to living in London, living in New York, that's pretty normal. We rent pretty, large apartment, like a penthouse, two-story apartment in a condo, in a nice area, nice condo. I can't rent this kind of apartment. It's like in Dubai, it would be like twice or three times the price. In New York, it would be definitely like at least uh, two times more expensive. Mm -hmm. You drive a, a motorcycle. Yeah. <clears throat> What's driving on the roads like? I kind of get used to it. Now it's much better than before. I was like, in the beginning, it was weird to, to see how like taxi drivers sometimes drive like with this the famous one they accelerate and then break for some reason now i kind of used to it almost used to it but driving actually right now riding a bike it's kind of it's a kiasu thing so people are they, like they're trying to beat the traffic they're trying to beat the time they're trying to be the as fast as possible this kiasu mind, mentality what does that mean kiasu kiasu is like chinese thing for like like you know tiger parenting mm -hmm. when parents they feel miss out they, f they have fear of missing out if they if their kids are not like doing 100 percent great in a school this kind of kiasa thing is like you it's formal actually mm -hmm. fear of missing out kind of thing now i'm a kiasa a bit myself now <laughs> like my writing i think my writing style is is a bit aggressive what i try to do and what is is lacking here i'm a kind of okay because riding and driving is very easy here in singapore like no traffic infrastructure is amazing so it's it's easy it's like no complaints no traffic it's a it's a paradise Honestly, but it would be nice if people sound like cars let go other cars like let's say it's a major road and then someone is coming from minor road and then almost no car will like slow down and let the way to the car from a minor so road. So that's FOMO, yeah? They don't want to miss out on their place this in car, the... This guy, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, tr I try to do it like I try to slow down and then yeah, you mm -hmm. go, go, go. And then sometimes people, they don't understand, they don't care. Oh. What, what, what? They just don't go and I block traffic uh, at the back and it's like, okay, I just go. What do you enjoy eating in Singapore? Number one is laksa. Dry or wet laksa? Uh, wet laksa. The second one is nasi lemak. And I like bakute. I like soup in general, so bakute is nice. I like pork. Singlish. <laughs> you've, you've stuck a few lars onto uh, things yeah. here and then. How are you doing with Singlish? I'm a big fan of like in general like how Singaporean accent sounds. I enjoyed it now. I didn't enjoy it in the beginning. When it come like um, I used to understand maybe like 30% of like locals, especially if it's like a heavy English. Now I kind of understand it well and I start enjoying it, how it sounds. I listen to some uh, local podcasts and just, I like how it sounds. I don't know why. You know Kumar, the comedian, it's like the, yes. one of the biggest yeah, comedians, yeah. like this Kumar guy, the legend of local stand-up comedy. We went to his show and like went with some friends. I understand maybe like 70-80% what he's saying, but my friends they are not very like localized and they understand like they say we kind of missed the show because like only 20% we kind of they kind of get the context but it was really hard to understand for them so I think it's a test if it's, you understand like 70% of what Kumar is saying 
then you are quite you localized. Get it. If you had some some visitors coming into town, where would be the top three places you'd say you've really got to see this during your time here? The first one would be Pinnacle. This is a famous HDB. So people don't know, but you can pay, I think, six sing dollars for security at the ground floor. And they will let you go to the roof garden on the floor 50. And it's amazing. It's like a hidden spot, so not many people know about it. It's, but it's great. The second one would be the National Museum of Singapore. Top notch. It's just one of the best museums I ever went to. The third one would be quite random. It's called The Projector in a golden mile tower if you want to like feel kind of hipster kind of niche vibe it's a place to go it's a cinema but they also do shows they do stand-up comedy and just nice place this building is historical unfortunately they I think they are planning to put it down the building but I think the tower stays with the projector wait don't skip if you want more flexibility regarding where to live and what to do, consider starting a YouTube channel as a side hustle. But there is no need to quit your job right away. My approach to this channel, my other channel with 300k subs and hundreds of my clients' channels is to begin on the side, focus on testing, start making money and then scale your success and if you want, quit your job or other projects. It will be your 12 months journey for making money through YouTube, personally coached by myself. The link in description below see you on the other side and now back to the video there's something going around in the media at the moment i think this us youtuber blogger i don't know which came to singapore and he left and he wrote this little article saying everybody in singapore constantly wears business attire shirt and tie and i think there's a lot of netizens that have piled on and told him quite politely mm. no you're wrong just perhaps where you went are there any kind of stereotypes that uh, that you're aware of that you've heard talking to different people that really don't stand up to scrutiny my biggest problem with the, the perception of Singapore from the outside world is like people say oh Singapore is like a fine country this that's the reputation is actually that was built I think that was built through the years it's a fine country very strict but honestly like living here in the day-to-day -day basis you don't feel this strictness you just feel safe because all the cctvs in even like cctv like in london there's much more cctv there are yeah yeah per in capita Mos in moscow yeah. more, more cctv in beijing in china in general it's more cctv i ride this road uh, pasir pajang road almost every day there is a fine for uh, jaywalking people every day dozens of people just jaywalk freaking four <laughs> lane road with the limit of 70 or 80 kilometers per hour it's like yeah, people do jaywalk, people do litter. It's pretty clean. Singapore is clean, but if you explore Singapore more, you see it's not like 100% clean. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's normal and people litter. And I don't think that every individual do littering. They go to jail straight away or being like canned <laughs> or like shot to death. Singapore has this reputation, but five years here, I never had any fine. Most of the things make sense. Singapore is not as strict as people think. Have you ever jaywalked in Singapore? No, of course not. Okay. Never. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> when you contrast, compare and contrast Russia or Moscow with Singapore, what do you end up with? I would say the places are quite different. Singapore is safe. Moscow is considered pretty safe compared to other European cities. Now maybe not, not anymore, but now it's like, I don't want to go deeper in this, uh, the current situation. It's like freaking crazy. But before, like Moscow was pretty, like relatively safe uh, in terms of like small crimes, mm -hmm. like in the city, in the city center, you're like completely safe. I always like, felt more safe in Moscow versus like Paris. Moscow is like, is super, I don't know, maybe you would compare Moscow to Bangkok more it's more like never sleeps clubs restaurants it's pretty also pretty comfortable to live in because mm -hmm. the people don't know but all the digital services like way better than in many places you can get your groceries like in 15 minutes you can get like food easily like 24 hours a day banking is great way better than anywhere else the vibe is different moscow is like old old city singapore it doesn't feel old moscow feel like more like european city the interesting thing is i think russians are closer mentally to Singaporeans because like half of Russia is Asia. Sure, actually. yeah. And I think the mentality, like if you compare, let's say, Singaporeans to Americans, so I think Singaporeans are closer to, to Russians. Singaporeans sometimes can be like more straightforward, though more polite versus Russians <laughs> in general, I think. <laughs>
I jumped onto Google, typed in Russian stereotypes. And the first result was Wikipedia, and we all trust Wikipedia to be <laughs> absolutely true. Exactly. But I'd just like to, to get your thoughts on these Russian stereotypes, whether or not you think mm. that they are. The first thing that came up was no sense of humor. No, that's not true, I think. I know there is- You look quite sad. <laughs> I think sometimes it's like special sense of humor, especially for people in the very like rural areas, rural people. They like they have special sense of humor. I don't think it's like no sense of humor. Next one, and I haven't picked all of them because some I threw away. <laughs> Next one is vodka. The thing about Russians, like me growing up, be like being a student in Russia, we used to drink vodka a lot. We mix it with beer because otherwise. Yeah, we say like if you, there is a saying, not mixing vodka in a beer, it's a money for nothing, like money to the wind, like money for nothing. Because you, when you mix, like you get drunk much easier. <laughs> and what is the hangover like the next day? Yeah, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but when I moved to Moscow and then start living like a kind of office kind of life, I stopped drinking vodka. So you drink mm -hmm. cocktails or so, like wine. So maybe a semi, a semi point for, for in, Wikipedia. In the cities, people don't drink much vodka, but in the rural areas, people drink mm -hmm. a lot of vodka. Yeah. This one, I think, has come about because of YouTube, that a lot of Russians, they have a dash cam in the front of their car. This, this. And so the one is terrible yeah. driving habits in Russia. First about dash cam, that's true, I know, my dad has it. I think Singaporeans also do dash cam because then if something happens, it's easier to work out with mm -hmm. insurance company. But Russians do it for fun, I think. They use <laughs> to upload to the internet. <laughs> this crazy, crazy thing. So there is a whole genre on YouTube like with this crazy accident <laughs> happened. The driving habits in Moscow is not too bad. The funny thing about like how people do it. I don't remember if people do it in the UK because I live in the UK as well, but I don't remember if they do it. Use your emergency light when someone lets you go, you to say thank you. Yeah. In Singapore, they, they do hands. They probably see it through their window. But in Russia, they do emergency light. Have you heard about it? No? So in the UK, quick flash of emergency light to say thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Um, but I do know in, in other countries where I've been, emergency light means I'm coming through. Cultural differences on... Uh, the lights for years. What are your thoughts on the, uh, is it the special incursion, Vladimir Putin called it, or the war, as other nations are calling it? What yeah, are your yeah. thoughts on that? It's a fucking disaster. We had a like hard time when the whole thing started in February 2022. March and April, you just always nervous and scared and like it's it's crazy and i cannot me being russian i can never think like how people in ukraine like mm -hmm. how what what they feel is like it's it's crazy i completely disagree what's going on the most tragic thing is like that was all thing was initiated by one guy plus like three or four plus super close inner circle. No one benef like is benefiting of it. No people in Russia, no people in Ukraine, yeah. no people in Europe, no even oligarchs, they're losing money. No even Putin right now. So it's like freaking lose, 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 lose game. And it's a, it's a complete disaster. Let's move on from that. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're gonna talk about your career generally. What's the most important lesson that you've learned throughout your career? Go see the world and not only travel, but go live in other places. I think it's super, super important to grow as a person, to improve as a person. If I stayed in Russia and never moved, I would definitely be, maybe I, I would support Putin right now. <laughs> I would definitely be like a different person, much more narrow perspective on life. So it's definitely help if you go and try to live, not go only as a tourist, but try to live like a local, like spend two mm -hmm. months, three months in a place. and see how it feels like see what you like what you don't like and sometimes what i love about like moving like living in other places is you understand yourself better after putting yourself in a different environment you're a big believer in kind of moving away and experiencing the world where did that come from i think it's from my family because i was born so, so it's very complicated so i was born in uh, the island called Sakhalin. it's uh, close to japan a few kilometers away from japan from hokkaido there are kuril islands and then my parents they live there they were like in Kazakhstan, so mm. they were born there because their grandparents were sent to Kazakhstan at Stalin time, like Gulag time, this kind of thing, but they're Russians. Then my dad, he's a surgeon and he's in the military. So he was sent, but he graduated from the uni 
from his uni in the 1970 something. So he was sent to Kuril Islands to work and then they lived there and then they, they moved to Sakhalin and I was born in Sakhalin. And then after like two years of my life, I don't remember Sakhalin, after when I was two, we moved to Vladivostok and then it's very east part of Russia also. And I spent there 14 years. And then I remember family discussions when we like, should we go more central in Russia? Because like there were different kind of factors uh, why we wanted to go to the more central, mm -hmm. closer to our relatives. In Vladivostok back then, it was a lot of rumors there's gonna be big uh, earthquake in Vladivostok because it's, uh, earthquakes always are in uh, Japan and it's just nearby. And like in Kuril Lions, always like earthquakes like every day, literally. Oh, wow. Yeah, the small ones every day. And Vladivostok, uh, because it's a very, it's like very hilly, it's like some people call it. Russian San Francisco there with lots of like tall buildings so earthquake if it happens mm -hmm. like the city would be ruined and so there were like different criteria different uh, wise we would go to Central Europe and then we decided to move actually so we moved to I think it's boring <laughs> but it's really yeah, not this is, uh, <laughs> we moved to uh, the city called Volgograd it was Stalingrad where the Second World War the people know it as Stalingrad and so we lived there and then I moved to Moscow by my own after graduation from my university I think it was already kind of yeah. this kind of vibe growing up and moving always moving i think so i was always like oh i gotta i gotta i gotta move i gotta try something else like this kind of passion but now it's time to settle yeah now it was like i love traveling but i feel definitely because i run my business singapore around this channel in singapore mm -hmm. i feel like home for me it's like no need to move anywhere it's like okay i'm here i would love to be here long term this kind of feeling first time in my life i don't want to move oh you are so sweet thanks for watching the next video yeah right here, this one. Thank you again and see you there.